this and these. That's three fucking grand worth of killing. You got three grand worth of killing to do? There's five. Well, that makes you a preferred customer. Hey, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to Boss Movie Dungeon. I am back with another review from the dungeon. And this is going to be my fourth in this series. And today we're going to be going over the 2007 James Wan movie, Death Sentence. Now, this is a movie that I knew nothing about. I had not heard about this movie until um, Brad was nice enough to send me a copy of this when he heard I had never seen it before. Um, this movie is super underrated. Um, I knew back when I, when I first watched this movie that eventually I was going to review this movie on my channel and talk about it. So I knew eventually this was going to be one of my reviews and my review for the Dungeon series. Now, the first time I seen this movie was on New Year's Eve. I watched it with my buddy Ryan. You know him as Dr. Ordinary. We watched this movie on New Year's Eve. Me and my wife went down to his house um, with him and his wife, and I had, had a little New Year's Eve party, and me and him watched this movie, had many, many drinks, and I was always afraid that the reason why I enjoyed this movie so much was because I was extremely inebriated when I watched it the first time, but I remember walking away from it going, well, more like stumbled away from it, going, damn, that movie was fantastic. I really want to watch it again completely sober and see if it holds up, see if I like it even more, um, or see if I just kind of overhyped it in my mind because I'd had a few drinks. But I really want to get some back and forth on this. Please let me know down below if you have seen this movie. Give me your thoughts on it. But if this is your first time watching a review from the dungeon, the way I do it is as soon as I get done watching the film, I'm going to jump back there on the desk, give you my immediate thoughts on the film, give you my immediate review while it's still fresh in my brain. But I'm going to go ahead and press play and get started. I'll be back with you guys in just a bit. Here's just a real fast shot of the title screen. You do get some special features here. We'll go down here to the extras. That first one there is just the different versions of the film. There's one that's going to be in German, one that's going to be in English. And you get the making of making a scene. It goes over a really great scene in the movie. Well, it's a really good chase scene. And they kind of go in detail how they how they shot that to make it like one take. It's a really cool little featurette. You get some B-roll footage, a lot of really great interviews. Interviews with Kevin Bacon, interviews with James Wan, and some other guys from the film, Kelly Preston. You get some, some photos from the film. And this is just some other trailers they recommend. So um, a pretty good amount of features, you know, for a, I guess it's a studio release. Like I said, it's a German release. But um, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so I just finished watching Death Sentence. I've restarted this video like three times now because in the last two takes of me trying to film this, I got way too excited. I was talking too fast. I kind of was going all over the place. So I decided to just, just scrap everything and start over again. I'm going to try to keep my cool here. Let me just say that this movie is dramatically, dramatically underrated. This movie is directed by James Wan. It stars Kevin Bacon, Kelly Preston, John Goodman, and Lee Whannell. Now, the reason why I mentioned Lee Whannell, he has kind of a smaller part in the movie. He plays one of the bad guys. He plays Adam, the guy that's chained up in Saul. So like I said, I'm going to try to keep my composure because I'm super jacked up right now. Um, this is a fucking fantastic movie. Um, I love watching a blind buy. When I seen this back on the first of the year on, on New Year's Eve, um, I'd had a few drinks. I was a little worried that maybe the alcohol made me like this movie more than I should have. But I can let you know right now after a second watch, the alcohol had nothing to do with it. This movie is badass. Um, this is the this is the best blind watch I've ever watched. Now, obviously, New Year's Eve was my blind watch. But I'd never heard of this movie. I'm a big Kevin Bacon fan. And like I said, this movie is so underrated that I had never even heard of it, being a big Kevin Bacon fan. Um, this movie blew me away. Um, I've never seen a movie be so good that just flew under my radar where I, I didn't know anything about it. And I'm going to get a little more into that in just a little bit of why that was the case. But just to give you a, just to give you a rough outline of the movie, Kevin Bacon plays, he's like a risk assessor for like an insurance company. That's kind of hard to say, risk assessor. Whatever he is, he works for an insurance company. He's your regular American family man. He has a wife played by Kelly Preston. He has two sons, one about to graduate high school that's kind of a hockey star. He has another son that's the younger brother. He's a few years younger. He's, he's kind of in his brother's shadow. You can tell that maybe the, um, the older son is kind of the favorite. And so they do a really good, a really good job to really quickly get you invested in this family, showing like family videos, family photos. You get a little bit of time with the family for all the bullshit starts coming down. They do a really good job of that. And basically, long story short, something happens to the to the oldest son. He gets murdered. I don't want to go into too many great details about it. You can watch the trailer. They show all that in the trailer. So that's the premise of the movie. His oldest son gets killed, and instead of um, trying to put him in jail. Kevin Bacon, who was the only witness, there was no cameras at this gas station where he got killed at. 
Instead of striking a deal with the attorney to put this kid away for three to five years because there's no other witnesses other than Kevin Bacon, Kevin Bacon basically decides to let this kid walk. He says he can't really place him. He wasn't really sure, so the kid will get the kid goes free. What everybody doesn't realize is that Kevin Bacon did that so he could go full fucking Charles Bronson on his ass. One of my favorite things about this movie is seeing Kevin Bacon go from one of us, just a regular Joe, to Mr. Fucking Badass, Charles Bronson, Death Wish, Vigilante Killer. It's, it's done really, really well. It's very realistic the way everything kind of goes down. There's very few holes in the plot. Uh, so usually with movies like this, you could be like, well, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. There's a couple little nitpicky things, but nothing even worth mentioning here. Um, this movie is real damn close to being perfect. Um, the, the fact that nobody talks about this movie, the fact that this movie bombed the way it did in theaters, again, we're going to talk about that here real briefly in just a minute because I feel like it's important for this review. It, it blows my mind. Now, something I did not know um, when I watched this the second time and I was getting ready to do this review, I was doing a little research. This movie was based on a book by a guy named Brian Garfield. Now, Brian Garfield, whatever, was the guy that wrote the book the original Death Wish movie was, was based on. And the book this movie was based on in the book world is a direct sequel to Death Wish. Brian Garfield is, was a fan of the Death Wish movie. He thought it was very true to the book. He was not a fan of all the Death Wish sequels. He was he has come he has one on record to say that he is a fan of this here, even though it does skew a little bit from the book. There's basic idea that when he wrote the book is this movie really held true to that. And so Brian Garfield, the writer of the book, whatever of Death Wish, the sequel to Death Wish, which is Death Sentence, he was a fan of. Death Wish sequels, not so much. I did want to bring that up because I thought that was neat. Because when you see, when you see this movie here, it is in the same vein of Death Wish, and um, I'm gonna—I hate to say it because I love Death Wish, but I enjoy this movie so much more than Death Wish. I'm a Charles Bronson fan; everybody knows that. I love Death Wish; it's a classic. But if I'm gonna go through one of the two, nine times out of ten, I'm going back to Death Sentence. It's just that good. But just real fast, I want to talk about James Wan because I thought this was very interesting. James Wan's first movie will put him on the map. Everybody knows was Saul. Saul got around a million dollar budget and it made over a hundred million dollars, which right, right there, he was going to be able to pretty much write his own ticket for his next movie. His next movie, Dead Silence, he got a $20 million budget, opened in weekend and only made $7 million and only made $22 million worldwide. That movie came out on March 16th, 2007. Well, just a few months later, um, Death Sentence comes out. Now this movie came out on August 31st, 2007. It had a $20 million budget. Again, his next two movies, his first movie, million dollar budget. Next two movies, $20 million budget. And neither one of them did worth a damn. Well, Death Sentence got a $20 million budget, made $4 million open a weekend, made $16 million worldwide, didn't even get his money back. But there's a reason for that. There was another movie that came out on August 31st, 2007, and that is Rob Zombie's Halloween. Now, like it or love it, when that movie came out back in the day, everybody was talking about it. Everybody was going to see it. It was the only thing people were talking about. And because of that movie, I truly believe that's why this movie flew under the radar. Nobody talked about it. Nobody knew about it, including myself until recently. And um, I truly believe that's why this movie bombed. I think that if it came out a different weekend, a different time, but without being attached to Rob Zombie's Halloween, I think the movie would have blew up. I think it would have been something everybody's talking about even now in 2023. And I hope that after some of y'all see this review, you also become fans of this movie the way that I am. And after Death Sentence, you know, so you got a million dollar budget, hundred million dollar movie, $20 million budget, a bust, $20 million budget, a bust. The next movie after that in 2010, you would think that would pretty much have killed his career. He kind of made a comeback after that. After that, he came out with Insidious in 2010. He's back to a $1.5 million budget. The movie makes $13 million opening weekend and makes over $100 million worldwide. We're talking solid numbers here. And then a couple years after that, he makes The Conjuring. Everybody knows how well The Conjuring did. He had a tw he's back to a $20 million budget again. So he has a $20 million budget, but this time he made $41 million opening weekend and $320 million worldwide. Needless to say, he's now made it. Um, after this, he has Insidious um, Chapter 2. It did fantastic. It made, then he has Furious 7, Jesus Christ. $1.5 billion on a hundred... $1.5 billion on a $190 million budget. He has The Conjuring 2 that does well. He has Aquaman that makes them just an ass ton of money. And then, of course, after that, in 2021, post-COVID, he made Malignant, which went straight to streaming. That movie was kind of a bust. Had a $40 million budget. It made $34 million gross worldwide, but I, I don't think it ever got a theatrical release. If memory serves, that was streaming only. Of course, he has Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom coming up. That's going to make an ass ton of money, too. But the point I wanted to make is that James Wan, he's one of my favorite directors because, one, he has a fantastic filmography. I've seen very little, if to nothing, from this guy that I hadn't really loved. 
And just the fact that he had those two movies bombed back to back and then came back, whatever, and made Insidious and just made it, after that he's a household name. He was pretty much a household name after Saul. I mean, I don't think it was that smart. People that were promoting this movie, you should have put this against Halloween. Um, I mean, never. I mean, you never want to have a movie open up against something like Halloween, Star Wars, you know, the next Lord of the Rings movie. You never never want your movie to open up the same weekend as something like that. But, um, yeah, this this movie here, I mean, I, I, I'm such a fan of it. I'm such a fan of it. I'm a huge Kevin Bacon fan, and I truly believe this is some of the best work Kevin Bacon has ever done, some of the best acting he's ever done. Um, if that's not the case, let's just say this. that If somebody asked me to rank my top three, top five Kevin Bacon movies, that's in it every single time. Yeah, if you're a Kevin Bacon fan, you are doing yourself a disservice not watching this movie. Um, now, this is a German release. My buddy Brad was nice enough to send this to me, so I don't know exactly how much this was. But um, I don't think it ever had an American Blu-ray. I know there was an American DVD out there. And I don't think you can find this anywhere on streaming. I, I looked briefly and I didn't see it anywhere, but that doesn't mean you can't. I just didn't see it anywhere on streaming. Out of all the reviews that I've done so far, this is going to be my highest recommend of what you need to watch. You need to stop what you're doing. You need to find some way to get this movie. You need to watch it. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. I know I'm probably blowing this out of proportion. I know there's going to be people down in the comments that's going to tell me they didn't like it as much as I did, and that's fine. But just me personally, my personal opinion, um, this is one of the greatest things I've watched this year. Um, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. I love the feel of the movie. I love the action of the movie. I love the way it makes me talk to the screen. Anytime I'm watching a movie like this and I'm getting pissed off, I can feel my blood pressure go up. I know this movie's being effective. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And John Goodman, I love John Goodman. I think John Goodman's fantastic. He's one of my favorite actors. I love what he does stuff like Roseanne, his, his, um, his, uh, The Big Lebowski. Um, John Goodman does comedy great. But when John Goodman plays a villain, when John Goodman goes dark, go look at 10 Cloverfield Lane, John Goodman does some of his best work. I wish for the rest of his career he would play characters like the character he played in this right here. I love John Goodman in this movie. Um, it's fantastic. But something else I didn't notice the first time I watched this movie, and I noticed it on a second viewing, and I'm going to throw some screenshots up here. Um, there's some graffiti in the background on two different shots where you can actually see some graffiti painting of Billy the Clown from the first Saw movie. And like I said, I'll throw the shots up here at some point. So the first time I watched this, I didn't notice it. Like I said, I had been drinking a little bit. But on a second watch, I noticed it. I had to rewind for a minute and found it, and I kind of geeked out a little bit. So I know there's a lot of fellow nerds out there watching this review. Make sure you keep, keep your eyes open for Billy the Clown. I love when they do shit like that. Like I said, it really geeks me out, whatever. Um, so that was that was kind of a cool little Easter egg to find in this movie. Like I said, this is a German release. So a lot of the stuff on the menu, as you've seen earlier, um, is going to be in German. Now, the way I had to watch it, and I, maybe I did it wrong, but in order to get the best sound quality, the 5.1, the only, the only option it gave me, and like I said, it was in German, unless I did something wrong. The only way I could watch it in 5.1 um, in English is to have German German subtitles. So through the whole movie, it's in English. Um, it's got the 5.1. It's got great sound. But I had German subtitles on mine the whole time. And I couldn't figure out a way to play it in 5.1 without the German subtitles. So just keep that in mind. And if I did something wrong, somebody let me know. <laughs> well, that is going to do it for my review of Death Sentence. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be back really soon with some more reviews from the dungeon. Thank you.